So why are you actually trying to define a process? Now this is the real question when it comes to you're about to run a project and you're trying to work out how you're going to run that project. And why are you trying to define the project? You are trying to provide a set of rules for your team to work with. You're trying to state what those rules are and give people a framework that they're trying to work within. You're trying to create a shared understanding for the people in your team so that what one person thinks about what the testing should involve is the same as what another person thinks. It means there's no chance of an assumption screwing things up. If I see something is ready to go and I, I can actually have the confidence that a certain set of steps have occurred. So you're trying to create that shared understanding. And you're trying to generally improve the quality of your product. You, you believe that this process is going to produce a good outcome. And you're trying to remove or alleviate risks in your project. And I mean this from a process perspective, not from a, um, a, a product, product perspective. So you're trying to build in enough bits of testing and design to ensure that the right people are doing the right jobs and bringing things forward in a good way. So defining the best process. The best process is as lightweight as it can be. That is not saying that there is any upper limit on how involved your process can be. It's just saying, if you see extraneous steps in there, remove them. The more extraneous steps there are, the more chance there is for people to make mistakes or for things to fall through the cracks, because every, every uh, jump between parts of the process is a handoff. So we talked about waste. Um, so you want it to be as lightweight as it physically can be without, um, uh, without being under, underdone satisfies the needs of the project. If you have a project that will run well in Waterfall, use Waterfall, it's fine. Think about what you're trying to achieve and how best you can achieve that. It doesn't actually matter whether or not it doesn't meet your, uh, your, your personal preferences. Do the right thing for the project. And the best process should engage every member of your team in the optimal way. So if you have people who are brilliant graphic designers and you want a visually stunning product, then you should give them a space in the process that allows them to bring their skills to bear. But at the same time, if you, if you wouldn't put a design piece into something where you don't have someone who can do the job or there's no requirement for it in the process. So that is talking about business processes. So I love just learning about general processes, all of the different ones you can have and cherry picking them when it comes to running a new project. Whenever we start a new project, the first step is to sit down with the people in the team and discuss how you're going to roll it out. You may find, if you think of the waterfall model, it's a non-iterative model, but if you consider that you're going to run this waterfall project in the space of one week, and that next week you're going to kick off a new waterfall project and it's going to run over the space of a week. Really, what you've now turned it into is an iterative process that, you know, it's effectively now lean or agile. It, it doesn't matter what the labels are. Think of how you can make your process work for what you're trying to do.